Hello, uh, it's Virginia from the Yellow Farm. I uh, wanted to show you this morning uh, how to work with your shorter staple locks. Uh, we're going to be working today with locks that are probably in the neighborhood of three to four inches long. Um, they usually come, these are pre-washed. These are, again, Wensleydale or Teeswater. Uh, this shorter staple, uh, sometimes I blend them together. And my flock, you know, each individual sheep has such a different fiber. Um, and I find so many similarities between the two breeds. Uh, so again, these are just washed and shorter. And they come like this rather than being dry like the long locks and, and stretched out. Uh, these come sort of in a clump. Um, so what I'm going to do to start, we're going to be making something that looks like this. This is going to be a cowl. Uh, you may have seen the long locks collar uh, that we did with a longer staple length. Uh, this is going to be a cowl. You could also do the locks collar in a short uh, staple and you get a very soft, curly uh, piece of work like this. Um, and there's a lot of advantages to that. You know, sometimes you just don't want the really long staple that hangs down. You want something that looks more like shearling. So that's what we're working on today. So I'm going to take my locks and I'm going to pull out. I like to work with them on my knee. Uh, you could work with them on a table, anything that you're, you're comfortable with. And I'm just going to pull a few out of this of this uh, and lay them across my knee so that they're a little easier to work with so you can see what we're doing. Uh, and then I'm going to set those down. I'm working on a circular needle here and I've already worked quite a bit of this piece. I'm using a DK yarn. It happens to be the yellow form DK but it could be anything and it also could be any weight. So these techniques can be used uh, for any kind of uh, any kind of yarn really. Uh, this is a size 6 needle. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, like we did with the long lock, I'm going to take a piece of short lock. Ooh. I'm going to take a piece of short lock. I'm going to let it dangle between my two stitches, just like that. Uh, and in this one, I'm going to knit one. This piece is being worked just knit uh, because it's circular. So I'm going to knit one, just like we did with the long locks. But then I'm going to take the tail end and instead of carrying it to lock it in because it's a little bit shorter, I'm just going to bring it to the front and let it hang out of the piece of the work. And I'm going to just plain knit a second stitch. That helps to lock this in. If Again, if you, you, you can just thrum it, which would be just bending it over your needle this way. Bending it over your needle this way. Uh, and then knitting it on, but I worry that you'll be able to pull it out because our fiber is, is silky and sort of slippery. So again, I lay the shorter lock in and I let some of it dangle. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the little piece dangling out. I hold the back with my yarn, just like with the longer staple, and I knit one, taking the yarn and the piece all together right around my needle. But then when I'm done with the knit, I take this little tail and I just bring it around to the front so it adds. I don't want it in the back. I want it poking out the front and I knit a second stitch. That gives you on the back side all your purl stitches and you'll see some texture and some locks sort of poking out there, which is fine, but it leaves all this lovely softness on the front. So again, we're going to take a piece of lock that we pulled out. This is kind of a nice fat one. But as you can see, it's only, you know, it's not very long, which is, is wonderful for this uh, technique. So again, we're going to just place it between my two stitches. I'm going to hold the tail with my yarn. I'm going to knit a stitch carrying the tail with my yarn. And then for this, because they're shorter, rather than knitting a second stitch, I'm just going to take the tail end and flip it to the front. I still have my yarn on the back, and I'm going to knit a second stitch just to kind of lock that in. That gives this a little more tension and a little more something to kind of lock onto. Uh, and I'm going to do that all the way around. Now if you want, grabbing a few more locks here, if you want your piece to be very, very dense and have lots and lots of locks in it, you can do this uh, adding your locks on every row. 
I'm just going to add another lock here so you can keep seeing this idea there again as the, the tail is just sticking out. Grab the back end, knit one, flip the excess back around to the front which helps to lock it in and then I knit a second stitch. Um, this has been knit down here at the very beginning. I added a lock every every other stitch just as I was showing you. Add the lock and then knit one. When I get up here I decided it was getting a little too dense down here so I only added locks on one full round and then I would just simply knit around and then add locks around and knit around and as you can see it makes it you can't really see any difference in the work you can feel that this end is a little denser where I added locks every single row and this end is a little softer and actually I think would be a little nicer toward your skin or toward your neck and as I say this is going to be a this is going to be a cowl uh, so it's just going to pull right over your head. It's nice and soft and stretchy, and I think it, it's lovely. I think it rivals the long locks. So if you have short locks, don't despair. You can use them to make something like this. Be a great cuff. Uh, look at that. Okay, you know you can really use this technique. So again, use your short locks. Um, these are Teeswater and Wensleydale. You could try it with something else. Uh, Blueface Lester, Border Lester, um, you know, you, you, you could also try with. I, again, am very prejudiced toward my sheep because that's what I raise. So I love them. That's the fiber that I like to use best. But please experiment. You can also do this in many colors. Uh, the other nice thing about this technique, when you're finished, that's my, that's my mark where I joined my rounds. Uh, when you're finished with the short locks like this, you can snip off any if you think that they're not, like if you get one that's really too long and you don't like that hanging out, you can you can just simply snip it, trim it down a little bit, but it really makes a great collar. So have fun with your short locks. Thanks for watching. Bye.